Mix that. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm making this tutorial for my good friend Ravanto about how to create basic bright game effects using a 3D program. This is basically his tutorial made into a video tutorial by me. For those who are familiar with Mugen, you often come across special effects such as hit sparks, explosions, lightning, lasers, sword slashes, etc. that look difficult to do or require a special program. These effects can be hand painted, but that can get tricky around unique shapes. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can use a 3D program to achieve one or two of these effects. Now, I use Lightwave as my main 3D program. This is not a program for everyone, so I suggest you use your own favorite 3D program. However, the 3D program you use should have a number of features or similar to get that technique to work. First, your program needs the ability to be able to morph one mesh into another. Secondly, as we will be animating a texture image on a 3D object, you will need the ability to animate a texture over time. Finally, when you place an image on the surface of your 3D model, your program should have the ability to turn off any texture tiling, so that when you animate your texture, the image does not repeat itself. Okay. The key thing for this tutorial is that we'll be working in black and white. It's more efficient this way and you can color your effects later in Photoshop or After Effects. Here's a simple image that I created in Photoshop. We'll be using this as the basis of all our effects. I'm going to start off by showing you one of the benefits of creating our effects in 3D. Taking the original image from Photoshop, I distorted it a bit, then used polar coordinates to wrap the image into a circle shape. Now, the image is texture mapped onto a single square polygon. I set the luminosity or brightness of the surface material of the polygon to maximum and turn the diffuse or shading down to zero. This ensures me that there is no shading or shadows from lights when I render the polygon. So, just simply rotating the polygon gives me this. Big deal, you say. I can do this in Photoshop. But, when we rotate the polygon forward, we get perspective. Perspective is not hard to achieve in Photoshop if you know what you're doing. But don't tell me that you would want to hand create 12 or more of these frames and make this perspective look correct. Still not convinced? Well, in 3D you can also control the speed of the rotation. If you had to hand create your frames, then it would be a total headache to repaint frames when the timing looks wrong. Setting things up in 3D gives you the power to experiment and get things looking right with very little effort. If you're still not convinced, then here's a kicker for you. What if the shape was not a simple slash, but a more complicated design? Do you honestly want to tell me that you would enjoy hand creating all the frames for something like this in Photoshop? So, perspective and animation control are two of the benefits of setting up your effects in a 3D program. What else, I hear you ask? Well, let's make a complex energy slash. We'll be using the original texture image created in Photoshop. First thing to do is to create your final overall slash shape. I've decided to go with an infinity symbol slash. Not too complex, but still a bugger to make by hand. Usually, when you create a morph shape, you create the flat, undistorted version of your object, and then create the twisted morph shape. But the best way to get the animation to look right without any weird distortions is to work backwards. So, here's the final slash shape again. I make a copy of the object and unravel the shape so that it is flat and straight. It's important that you try to get the lengths of the edges to approximately the same length as each other. You don't have to be perfect, but avoid large deviations. The straight mesh will be the master object, and the twisted mesh will be the morph object. The texture is applied to the master mesh with full brightness and zero shading. Now, when we morph the master mesh, we get this. Cool, but it still needs to be animated. I'm lucky because Lightwave allows you to animate a texture using a reference object, in this case a null. 
A null is a dummy object that is invisible to the camera when rendering, and helps in various ways such as animation and control. In 3D Studio Max, it's known as a dummy, and in Maya, it's known as a locator. However, you might not be able to animate your texture as I do in Lightwave, so you'll have to figure out how to do the same thing in your own program. By moving and scaling the null, I can animate my texture along the object to give me my awesome infinity slash. Ok, so that's just an example of how useful 3D is to making effects. There are three things I'd like to mention before I go. Number 1. If your effect is a curvy one, turn on subdivision smoothing onto your object before animating or you'll get hard edged animation. Number 2. It's important that you turn off any texture tiling when you animate your effect or you'll get this. In Lightwave, you can set the horizontal and vertical options of your texture to repeat edge, which is pretty much like turning off tiling. Just remember to put a one pixel border around your texture image, the same color as your background, and you'll be okay. Numero tres. If the flow edges, not the high edges, are not similar in length for both your master and morph mesh objects, then you'll get a weird texture stretching when you animate your effect. Well, that's it from me. Thanks to my friend Ravanto for a useful technique. Oh, and remember that you should try to find out how to do the same things that was covered in this tutorial in your own native 3D program. This is just the beginning of what you can do in 3D for your 2D effects. Don't forget that many programs have particle generators that's good for explosions, smoke and other natural effects. Anyway, good luck and trust me when I say that this technique will give you high quality 2D effects for your gaming and animation needs. See you later punks!